Just because when you start stepping out in faith and you see those seeds like manifest, I mean, it's 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 rewarding, but it's it's awesome. But man, getting you know sharing the gospel with one person and seeing my first salvation through you know me sharing the gospel, I'm like I'm hooked. Yeah. You know, seeing miracles. You know, when you lay hands on someone, I'm like that's the most fulfilling thing that I've ever experienced in my life. And it's like, man, sharing the gospel with someone and seeing someone recover from being sick or, you know, a, a blind eye or deaf ear, that's where it's at. That's like, yeah. that's like heaven on earth right there. Welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you are here today. I'm here with Dan, and we are joined with Brittany and Kyle Hughes. How are y'all today? Doing good. Doing good. Well. We're Welcome. Here. Yeah, we're so glad you guys are here. You guys have a pretty cool story. I know that you're a little bit of a new face to Heritage family, but we're excited to sit down with you because you guys are, are movers and shakers in the kingdom of God, and we're uh, really curious about how what, what brought you here, all of those things. So... Um, First of all, what brought you here? <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> First of all, thanks for having us. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes, thank you. It's an honor and privilege to be here. So, yeah. Well, yeah. we're glad you're here. We're thankful that you're part of our church family and came on the show. So, Yeah. Go ahead, you tell it better. Okay, so um, let's see. We first visited back in August 2021. Okay. Um, we came and um, visited when Pastor Rodney Howard Brown was here. Okay. And um, I had gone to his church and school out in Florida. And so, um, yeah, we heard he was coming here. We're like, we got to go. And my sister and my brother-in-law now, they came here. So they saved us seats. And, um, yeah, we got to visit here. And then we decided to come. Um, the next Sunday, and when we came in, I don't know who was ushering, but they set us right behind Pastor Justin and Ooh, Annette. Nice. It's a Tony Jordan move seats. right there. Right. Yeah. 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 It's, a it's a Tony yeah. Jordan move. So we come in, and they set us right behind him. So, of course, um, he turns around and introduced himself to us. And um, I think it was over the next couple of weeks, he messaged Kyle, and somehow they had kind of knew of each other over the years um, through social media and stuff. And then we came back. The next week after that, and um, we sat in the overflow section, and he called us up front and gave us a word, and we we're like, man, he doesn't even know us yet. <laughs> you know, he introduced himself one time, right. and um, so it was, it was it was very powerful. The word was um, spot on, and uh, it was good, and we, were, we kept coming because we were getting fed here and um, really enjoyed the um, people here and the ministry. So, yeah. Yeah, we're at that time, whenever um, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown came to do one of his 300 300- city tours uh, here, we were both kind of looking for uh, a new home church because I recently just moved back from Tulsa. She just came back from Florida. And so, and then we were going to be getting married in October. So we're kind of looking for a new home church. Where do we want to, you know, start our lives together? And so that was kind of Ronnie Howard Brown being here was kind of like the catapult of like, okay, this church is hosting, you know, this caliber of minister. And uh, so it's like, okay, well, we'll come back, you know, next Sunday and check it out outside of the special guest and that's when you know like Brittany shared that's when uh, we sat behind yeah (laughs) behind (laughs) pastor justin and then it just kind of we knew at that point it's like all right we don't even need to try another church we don't (laughs) even need to check out another church because already we're getting fed it's great teaching you know faith and uh about the world so it was like we just felt already right at home that's awesome. I mean, that meeting, that one meeting we had, has produced so much fruit. Not for the kingdom of God. We saw so many. That I don't. Were you at? You were at that long yes. meeting. <clears throat> I'm and, surprised uh, they had seats saved for you because there was a, a lot of competition for those seats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a there lot was. of overflow. We did. We had a big overflow, and it was really a totally a God thing from the backside. You know, like Rodney Howard Brown just bring in quite a crowd. For sure, yeah. mm-hmm. sanctuary is not huge yeah so there was there was some discussion about whether we were the right place but we really do knew as a church and as a as the leadership did that we really need to have this meeting so you guys mm-hmm. are some of the fruit that ended up being connected to our church which mm-hmm. is super super cool yeah, nice. yeah. Cool. so we like hearing that story yeah on that's the cool podcast <clears throat> yeah so you guys got here and i feel like immediately plugged in like i the, like the first time i saw you guys you were ushering i think and you were on stage doing worship like, so I was like, didn't even know that you were here. And then also, <laughs> it was like, wow. I'm like, and I thought you guys were recruited. I thought we were calling in from the big leagues. I didn't know what we were doing to get you guys immediately plugged in. But how was that? What was that process like? You just like, this is our church. We're going for it. I feel like we were recruited. 
no, um, I guess because my sister and brother-in-law, they came here. Right. And so um, there was people coming up to us, like knowing us our lives. <laughs> so it was just crazy. Um, so like the Deatons came up to us and kind of knew that we did missions and um, they knew I sang. And I was like, how'd they know all these things? Mm. And so we just, I guess we quickly got involved. I know. So we started coming that August. We got married in October. We went on a honeymoon that was almost a, a month long. And during that honeymoon, I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to get back plugged into worship. So that's why I got started there. Um, and then just, I mean, when you feel called somewhere, you're like, sure. let's get a part of this vision. Let's, you know, grab onto what they, um, what they're doing. And that was where my heart was. I don't know about yours. Yeah, it was kind of wild and, and cool because like, like she said, you know, when we started coming here, it's like people already knew us. Like we were already connected and we just felt like we just started, you know, to come, which is kind of cool. But um, I didn't really have the best serve mentality coming into, you know, coming into the church because I just, I didn't want to go through the motions. I didn't want to just serve and just go through the motions. And then really it was on the honeymoon uh, when she was like, you know, I, I feel the, you know, the passion to, you know, try out for the worship team and want to do that. And then at first I was kind of like, well, Tony was like, hey, you're going to be on my usher team. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I love Tony. Oh, he's great. <laughs> I love yeah. that guy. I was like, okay, cool. And, you know, I'd, I've been on usher teams before and stuff, so it was kind of cool. And it's kind of cool being a part of, like, the, the prayer line, too, because I feel like I don't know what it was before, you know, like before the Rodney Howard Brown thing, but I feel like it was kind of cool seeing, like, stepping right into, you know, action. So mm -hmm. it was really cool to see, like, you know, a lot of churches, they'll have – people up there praying for people, but I'm like, this is, this is eff effective prayer and I get to be a part of it, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, so yeah, enjoy, enjoy serving. That's awesome. That's awesome. And what do y'all do for, for a living? Go ahead. Well, I'm a real estate agent, been an agent for over seven years and recently just ventured out on starting my own interior design business. So that's fantastic. That's yeah. And I have a, uh, commercial residential garage door business. Uh, work on garage doors, <laughs> install, repair, service, and then gate openers as well, and hangar doors now. Yeah, that's awesome. And he's been doing that for over five years. Yeah. So the reason I ask that is because I think one of my first encounters with you was at our Kingdom Builders, our mis our mm -hmm. marketplace ministry yeah. uh, groups, and I watch you guys plug into that. How has that impacted your your business outlook, ministry connection? I think it's great um, to really have like a a group that really emphasizes on business and keen to business like because they go hand in hand like um i was talking with someone the other day just talking about how even in the business world like the successful people they may not credit it but a lot of it is through biblical principles of how businesses are successful and so to be you know connected with uh obviously the deatons that you know over oversee that that ministry really um, it was a really cool opportunity because we got to share, you know, a little bit about what we experienced at the Kingdom Business Conference in Florida at Rodney Howard Brown's um, oh, uh, cool. church. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, we were able to go there and uh, really just to bring some of that um, insight and, you know, revelation we got from there um, here. And it's cool to, to be in a, a church community that has, you know, fellow entrepreneurs and business leaders. And that way it's not just there's not like separate clicks. It's all it just flows together. Like mm -hmm. there's, you know, people that are you know, in ministry full time, there's business owners, there's just the church community. So it's cool to be able to connect on multiple uh, facets of life. So it's cool. <clears throat> I think it's, I think it's amazing how this house does that. They equips you to serve where you're called to. Yeah. yeah. That's either in the house. That's either, uh, you know, in a marketplace ministry, which sure. you guys have, but it also is evangelism. And they are great about sending people out. And that's something that you guys do exceptionally well. Um, can you kind of give us a background of your recent evangelistic journey? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, in 2018, I kind of got uh, a new heart towards the world and evangelism. Um, just a short short testimony before, um, you know, my life I was really was a selfish person. Um, really wasn't living for the Lord, was just living for myself and how I could build my kingdom, you know, in my my own bubble, chasing the American dream. And uh, it wasn't until about 2015, 2016, where I started to know like that, just the, at the time I thought it was just, you know, an urge, you know, or, or something. Uh, now looking back, it's the Holy Spirit. Um, 
saying, hey, there's more to life than what you're doing. There's more to life than what you're doing. 2018, uh, signed up to go on my first mission trip. Um, Try to get out of it two weeks before. So like, <laughs> I'm not a pastor. I'm just a, you know, backwoods boy. I'm working man. You know, I'm not a pastor, a minister, nothing like that. Um, but thankfully, I had people that pushed me. I uh, saw more in me than what I what I saw. And so going on my first mission trip, got baptized in the Holy Spirit there mm. um, in Peru. And really just got a new heart for the world and evangelism. And realized that it's not about me. It's not like yeah, my whole, the whole phrase on the flight was, it's not about you, get over yourself. It's not about you, get over yourself. And there, you know, thinking I'm going to minister to others, God really ministered my heart and really came back since 2018, been on fire for sharing the love, hope, and, and power of Jesus to others, whether that's in the nations or even local. So that's for me. Um, let's see. For me, when I was 14, I went on my very first mission trip to uh, Mexico. And, um, you know, you think it's close by, but it was a whole new world for me. And, man, it totally changed my life. I went there every year all throughout high school, um, just going and doing the work of the Lord, sharing the gospel, and to realize that there is such a different world outside of the world we live in here. And ever since then, I was like, man, I need to go all over. <laughs> I need to go all over to the nations to um, share the gospel. Um, so, yeah, that's what my heart has been, you know, set for the nations ever since I was 14 years old. When I was 19, I had someone give me a word that I would travel the nations me, with me and my husband and take the gospel to the world. So, so when y'all, yeah, that is a good word. So <laughs> yeah. when y'all got together, did you, when you shared that, did you realize that you guys had the same fire for evangelism and, and missions? Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have even thought twice about them if not, Absolutely. <laughs> really? just because I knew like yeah. that was my heart. And, you know, if someone didn't have a heart for that, then they, they wouldn't have, you know, lined up with my, my vision and my, right. you know, for life. So, yeah, <clears throat> for sure. I mean, if it, that wouldn't even, I was at the point in my life too, like when we started dating, like, I was done wasting time. It's either going to be this is it or it's not going to be at all. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to waste my time. And uh, so I already knew worshiper, you know, does missions, you know, is a fiery little thing. And I was like, this is going to work, you know. <laughs> so and sweet. then, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. So marriage is going well for y'all. Yeah. 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 It's Newly going well. yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's awesome when you get with a, you wait for the right person and you get with the right person. It's like, you can literally do way more for the kingdom than you could ever do for your, like on your own. So I think so. So yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, sure. I, yeah, you guys are kind of living proof of that right now. It's doing great. <clears throat> and you just got back from another mission trip, correct? Yeah. Well, it's just cool because even as we were dating, we were in Albania. So dating, we got to go to a nation uh, together. Your first and mission trip as a married couple. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah. 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 Aww. Yeah. Yep. So it was a very fruitful time. Uh, I was there for right around five weeks. Um, I go in in advance on these projects, um, two and a half to three weeks in advance to kind of help set up the logistics, um, you know, rally the pastors. We go six months in advance to kind of do scouting and just to kind of, hey, can we do a project here? And then the purpose of going in two to three weeks early is to, hey, we're actually coming. We're bringing a team. This is real now. And to kind of keep the ball rolling, get the ball rolling, um, get them ready, get the, you know, all the logistics side of things, hotel accommodations, just where are we going to do ministry? You know, is it, we're going into schools to do culture exchange. What, what does that look like? And then um, after that, a team of 35 came in and she was a part of that team uh, to just man, saturate the region. That's awesome. Yeah. What were the what were the strategies that the team worked to get set up ahead of time and used in order to share the gospel? Because if I understand correctly, like laws where you can't you can't really share your faith. Yeah. Right. So how did how did that look? What did it look like? Yeah, it's it was kind of a a thrill because you know claim to be a freedom of religion country, you can practice whatever you want, but um, it's anti conversion to where you can't really ask people to convert or you know from you know, a, a believer's standpoint or a Christian standpoint, you can't share the gospel and lead them in a prayer uh, of salvation. Wow. Well, that's what they say. But um, the, so some of the strategy for, for having an effective and a very efficient project was we went to remote areas of this region into the tea gardens. So with the tea gardens, they're kind of set up to where they have their own, not necessarily government, but their own like leadership structure. 
mm-hmm. to where we partnered with the local churches. You know, we don't do any missions project without the local churches. You know, it's, it's just not, you know, it's their people, it's their area, it's their, you know, it's their ground. And um, so we partnered with many, I think in April when we did the initial pastors conference, we had 65 pastors that showed up and said, yeah, we want, we want to be a part of this project, you know, this evangelistic project. So um, we were there partnering up with them. They were responsible for going into these tea gardens, getting the permissions from the police, the tea garden estate, and just any kind of permissions, which every year, so the people in the areas know, hey, they're Christians, hey, they're pastors. Like, it's understood. There's no, you know, conflict or anything like that. Everyone's kind of, you know, peaceful Mm -hmm. because it is freedom of religion. You can practice whatever you want. And so every year they do these Christmas celebration events for the public just to kind of, you know, share about the meaning of Christmas. It's not really a like a gospel project, but it's just, hey, this is what we celebrate. This is why we celebrate it. And usually they do prize giveaways, things like that, just to bless the community. And so in that meeting in April, they kind of, we, uh, you know, as we were planning, it's like, hey, let's piggyback off of this. And so that's what we did. You know, we went in there, acted as if it was their their Christmas celebration event. And uh, it was, you know, they planned pretty much everything, even down to the stage. They planned it. They put their name out there. They signed all the paperwork. And, uh, you know, we helped the funding of things with the prizes and stuff like that. And then the American team was their guests. So we came in, um, you know, advertised it, you know, hey, Christmas celebration from this so-and-so church. And then once they get there, um, you know, we're their guests, and that's where we, you know, shared the gospel. And with these projects, it's not to, to shove another religion down their throat. That's not what we're coming to do. It's coming just to, to introduce them to a relationship with the Creator, you know, so as we're sharing about Christmas, you tie it into the Christmas story, what truly is the the best gift. You know, you can win one of these prizes. You can win a refrigerator. You can win a bicycle. But at the end of the day, this price is, this price is going to, you know, break or it's going to perish. But we have a gift for you that's eternal. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you, you offer that gift to them. Right. And so super fruitful time. Um, you know, we see miracle signs, wonders, many salvations, um, so that's kind of the, the strategy behind that. And then also part of the advertisement is a, it's like a flyer that has a perforated side of it where they can fill out their name, address, phone number, and that's their entry to the prize drawing. So that seems pretty cool. But on the other side of things, that's a discipleship tool because now they put their ticket into the basket to win, you know, maybe the refrigerator or a smartphone well, at the end of the event we give those tickets to the local pastor and we equip them nice. with follow-up of like, hey, what do I do with this? Every one of these tickets represents a soul. Mm-hmm. And so now we had a team that stayed back and uh, they teach them how to, how to bridge that gap. You know, because more times than not, a, a new believer isn't going to walk into church that next Sunday. They don't even know, know what to sure. do. And especially yeah. there, it's like, they don't want to be seen going into a church because they just, you know, they're coming out of Hinduism. Like, or whatever religion or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. thing they believe in. So they don't want to be seen going into that. So it kind of equips the pastors to get mobile in themselves, pastors or leaders, and uh, bridge that gap by making that phone call. Hey, you know, we saw you, you know, may have won a prize, blah, blah, blah. Tell us about your experience. Mm-hmm. And then from there it opens up like, yeah, I didn't win a prize, but it was a cool time, you know, and just kind of starts that relationship with a pastor or a leader with that new believer. So it's a really cool, very strategic way to do it. Right. And you had shared with me once the the number of souls that got saved on this specific yeah. trip. What was that number? It's in- Documented uh, was 13,535. That's powerful. Yeah, 13,535 called on the name of Jesus for the first time. That's amazing. And that's just, you know, what we have documented. Who knows what, you know, because that nation we were told by – by pastors and just other leaders and believers that they're not really an expressive culture, Mm. especially with, you know, really the oppression of Hinduism and just other people. It's like, they're not going to be the ones that are like, yay, it's me. You know, like I just did that, you know, because it could bring, you know, um, lasting effects that you don't, they don't want, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's incredible to think of 13,535, 
you know, documented people, documented That's salvation, amazing. especially when you're trying to keep it a little bit like under the yeah. radar from like right. the government officials. Right. So, I mean, a lot of times we've done crusades where there's thousands and thousands, but yeah. here, just the fact that we had that many people show up at each crusade was a big thing in itself without, uh, I mean, not really, I mean, we got some, uh, you know, questions from some people, but yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. we're, we're back. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause these events, these, these crusades, you know, you want to have, right. Yet. Right. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Hopefully we can get a visa back in in Jesus name. Um, but you know, you want to get the, the word out. You want as many people there as possible sure. But this, this event, you know, we really wanted a target to like three to 4,000 max. Cause you don't want to get it out of hand per you know? crusade per crusade. Yeah. And so we really didn't want to get it out of hand. And then so like, man, that's to me, that's a huge win, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, we know heaven rejoices over one soul, but yeah. And then 133 documented miracles. That's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. The, uh, something I heard said by an evangelist once was like, like it takes seven interactions with somebody that they can encounter God with in one way or another, whether it's at your crusade or connecting with a local mm-hmm. church pastor or running into someone in the street that's saved, that just makes a connection. But it takes seven times before somebody wow. has really that change of heart to make that. That's on average. But those seeds are incorruptible. The, the word of yeah. God never dies. Yeah. It always produces what it goes forth to produce. So even though you have 13,000, which is still an astronomical that's number, amazing. in my opinion. It's amazing. Um, and we rejoice over that, like For knowing sure. that you were able to go and sow that much seed into that into mm-hmm. that nation is is awesome. in May, amazing. And we rejoice with you over yeah. it. Yeah. And our church body rejoiced with you yes, over it absolutely. too. You know, we <coughs> celebrated you guys going and coming yeah, back. Cool so we're glad, we, glad you made it back. Well, we, yeah. we yeah. were able to go because of our church. So yeah. we're so Super appreciative thankful. of our church and everyone that supported us and prayers, giving, everything. Yeah. It was it was very fruitful. So we're thankful. So good. That's awesome. Yeah. Where are you going next? That's good questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We were to be continued. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had one on the radar, and then um, we're probably going to have to not go to that one. But uh, we have some opportunities next year. Don't want to just jump into, you know, saying yes to to a certain nation or a certain project. Sure. So just kind of mm-hmm. seeking the Lord on, hey, what what nation do you want us to be in, or you know, what project do you want us to be a part of? We've had several ask us about like they their interest in going on trips and stuff. So we'd really like to. Um, you know, help serve our church where we're at too. Yeah. So however that looks like, so that's what we're going to be praying for in this next season too because we'd really love to take some people from Heritage to go somewhere, Yeah, shake the nation. That's awesome. I mean, I'll, we've we've been on m- many different trips. I think collectively we've been a part of 15 different mission projects and, you know, over 10 different countries. And um, we love going, love doing, but we feel like part of our assignments too is to help equip and encourage others to to go and to to be a part of you know different mission projects i mean 2018 like i shared that a trip to mm-hmm. peru completely changed my life completely changed my destiny you know mm-hmm. i discovered my destiny and my purpose and so it's like man i want I want others to taste that you know i want others yeah. to get a get a feel of what that is get an opportunity to get outside of of our bubble you know in our culture and uh, experience that so kind of leaving it open right now to see what other opportunities can come up and yeah, we'd love to be able to take a team yeah. Uh, yeah. somewhere. <laughs> there is something neat about and almost indescribable about seeing somebody come to come to know the Lord for the first time and, mm-hmm. yep. and the second time seeing another person do it and being part of their journey, part of their story to Christ. I mean, that was one of my most powerful experiences was also on a mission trip. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think our church in Oregon took us to, to Hollywood. And, and so we got to do that. And once you taste that side of it and you're like, oh, like this was a this was an eternal impact. Yeah. There's something mm-hmm. you can't get back. When you talk and talk about equipping other believers, what would you say to somebody who's on the edge and interested in this type of outreach mission ministry? Um, I would just say just do or just start. Like um, don't overthink it because man, I can tell you all the different things of what not to do. Um, because <laughs> that year after I signed up just to get someone off my back, like I doubted. I didn't want to go. And, uh, man, I'm so glad I did. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be going to another nation even, you know, I'm, my heart is for the world, you know, the great commission and, um, what we've experienced even locally, like just talking to someone, you think that just cause there's a church on every corner that someone, you know, everyone's got to hear about Jesus. And, um, 
you know, we we got to go out and do some soul winning. And we asked one guy, like, has anyone ever told you that God loves you and he has a plan for you? And he said, no. And I mean, he was a probably a, almost 30 years old. And I'm like, wow. Here in Fort Worth. Here in Fort Worth. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, for someone that wants to to be a part of an outreach or to, to go on a trip, just do it. Like, find find someone, you know, come talk to us. You know, hopefully we can encourage or, or get connected to, to some way, somehow. Mm-hmm. Don't overthink it, you know. Mm-hmm. And if it's even, um, for me, it was, a, you know, a financial thing on that first trip. I was like, I don't want, I don't have $3,000 to go on a trip. You know, it's like once you share with people, like, hey, this is what God's calling me to do. He's put on my heart to do this. The funds will be there. Like, that's not even, not even a problem. The funds will be there, and you're more than equipped to do it. Because mm-hmm. you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. It's not about yeah. you. Mm-hmm. It's about him working through you. So that's what I would say to someone that is on the fence about doing right. it. Just right. do it. I think if they have questions and they're somewhat intrigued and there's a little bit of a seed planted that's like, mm-hmm. you know, I think I want to do this, then like like he, what he's saying, mm-hmm. like go after it because mm-hmm. you'll never know Yeah, that's until, awesome. until you go after it, you know? Yeah. So. That's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you all ready to go with us next time? <laughs> I would love to go with you. I mean, yes. I yeah. can't take a break from Lumberjack Camp like the rest of you guys. We'll see. <laughs> um, we just need your hat. <laughs> No, I think it's uh, I think it's amazing what you guys do. I think it's something that even mm-hmm. pastors have spoken out about about just your guys' heart for evangelism and the way there's a lot of those people in our house yeah. that just have a heart for others and it manifests in different ways. Some people have marketplace ministry. Some people have like right. nation evangelism. Yeah. Some people have backyard evangelism. You know, some have, have Walmart evangelism. Yeah, it's just an amazing thing to go out there and in faith and just see what the Lord has for you. Yeah, and I think it's what you guys are doing is incredible, incredible. Yeah, there's not one one right way. You know, no. to do it. Yeah. And uh, even like to go on the marketplace stuff, like I felt whenever I was doing my business uh, initially, I felt like a check. It's like, okay, so there's a lot of ministries that are doing like homeless stuff and low income stuff. It's like, who's reaching the wealthy? Mm-hmm. So I really yeah. felt like, yeah. you know, some of the wealthiest people are the most lost people too. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's like, who's connecting with them? Who's reaching them? And so if you have an avenue or connection through business, through wealth even, then that's one open door to be able to minister to the upper upper middle class and upper class and it's like yeah there's it's everywhere you know and like you were saying like just when you like experience one soul come into the kingdom like it's throw it's it's fueling yeah like it fuels yeah. you to where it's like Absolutely. man let's go so, yeah, yeah. Go let's go who yeah. else yeah. who else you know right. and um I think it's just awesome to, um, like what he was saying, even like here, if there's ever time to go evangelize, do it. And um, just because like when you start stepping out in faith and you see those seeds like manifest, I mean, it's 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 rewarding, but it's it's awesome to, you know, see that, you know, come to fruition. So It's addicting. It, yeah, it's addicting. Yeah, it really is I mean, addicting. I've had cars, trucks, boats, hot rods, all that thing. And, you know, that thing's fun. Those things are fun and there's nothing wrong with them. But man, getting, you know, sharing the gospel with one person and seeing my first salvation through, you know, me sharing the gospel, I'm like, I'm hooked. Yeah. You know, seeing miracles, you know, when you lay hands on someone, I'm like, that's the most fulfilling thing mm-hmm. that I've ever experienced in my life. And it's like, I can have the most money in the bank or the coolest hot rods and toys and stuff. That's great. But man, sharing the gospel with someone and seeing someone recover from being sick or, you know, a, a blind eye or deaf ear. That's where it's at. That's like yeah. that's like heaven on earth right there. Absolutely. Because, sure. Man, I mean, not just just one testimony. Um, we had just shared a gospel presentation in a village, and um, we were actually done, about to load up, and these four brothers come along, and I guess they want a prayer, and so um, a guy from our team prayed for him, and um, he was he was mute um, and deaf, so he never had. Um, heard never talked ever and so we laid hands on him prayed for him and he started making noises out of you know like out of his mouth and his brothers they all like freaked out they were like oh my goodness because they have never even heard one any peep sound out. yes yeah wow and um it was just amazing and to you know we kept telling him keep talk keep keep doing it because it's going to just keep on coming and keep on coming and we had our translator just he would say hallelujah hallelujah and the guy was going oh and it was just amazing and to see the brother's reactions that had known him for his whole life and had never seen this and it was like that's heaven on earth being manifested right there and it's powerful and you're Mm -hmm. like who else 
you know. Right. Je- Jesus went Step about up. healing all, so yeah. you know, Come on down. when we have that in us, that anointing, then yeah. that's what's going to happen. And it's amazing to see that and to be used by God. You know, that's, that's literally what we were created to do. I don't think there's any doubt why you guys fit in so quickly to Heritage. Mm-hmm. You guys really have the heart and passion that uh, is that is a legacy of this house, mm. um, which is why this question is so exciting to ask you because the motto of our house is making winners in life. And you guys live that. But what, tell me what that means to you. Kind of like what you said about living that. I think when you know who you are in Christ, and then <laughs> that might be a little bit what he was going to say, but just know, knowing that authority and knowing that anointing that you walk with and that you can live that life, others see that. And like to me, and not only that, but when you go about you know, sharing Jesus and sharing your faith and sharing your testimonies, then others see that and see, they see victory, they see winning. And to me, that's making winners in life is just living out who God's called you to be. And by doing that, you're bringing others with you, you know, to win in life. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Knowing who you are in Christ and who he's called you to be, you're already winning, you know, and then as you fulfill what he's called you to do, you're helping as a byproduct, making other winners in life. You know, he doesn't call the equip. He equips the called. And, you know, once you discover that of who he's called you to be, then you're winning and others will win as a byproduct. And it's good when you see others win too. Just like oh, when yeah. they see their healing or when they see, you know, they they come into the kingdom. You're like, that's right. We're all, we're going to win. Yeah. So we're the body. Awesome. This is fun. That's fun. Really fun. <laughs> this is a good, they, that was an amazing answer. You guys are, are, are awesome, obviously. We were a huge fans of you, my wife and I. We love you guys to death. And I, this church is a zero blessing of this church. We are like on the 100%. worship team, on the service team, the things you guys are doing in, in missions, the things that you guys are doing just in life in general. It's it's awesome. And we just want to say thank you for that. And it's, that's why we want you here to share your story. We think it's important that people hear what you guys are doing. And if you want to get connected with them, in the show notes, we will put there, you guys have some links that we will include. So people who want to partake or get involved with them, please go into the show notes and check it out. But next Friday will be another First Friday episode. Right. We are in February, so this will be an amazing opportunity to, again, to dive into what our leadership is doing, the things that are on their heart. These are amazing episodes that really just speak to the heart of what this church is all about. And hearing from our leaders is yeah. amazing. I love it. So um, we want to say thank you so much. This is another winning conversation. We can't wait to see you next Friday. Bye. Bye.